Welcome to the Rich Equation Podcast. Today I have Chris Ansevin here. Nice. Chris, welcome, brother. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for doing this, man. Yeah. I know it took a little bit of convincing, but I'm really <laughs> glad you're here. I'm really honored, glad you're here. Uh, absolutely honored to be here. I'm, I'm an avid listener of the Rich Equation Podcast. I love what you're doing, everything you got going on here. Thanks, man. Uh, flattered and honored to be you know, here talking with you. Uh, there's an illusion of you asking me questions as if I know things, <laughs> and I kind of wish I'd be asking wow. you questions, but uh, I, I respect so much of what you're doing and everything that you got going on, and uh, you're a brain and a person that uh, I hold to very high regard. Oh, thanks, for Chris, really. Yeah. Chris and I spend a lot of time together. We yeah. have for the last year or so, yeah. and we have really deep quality conversations, yeah. and so I've been bending his elbow to try to get him in here because I feel like he has so much to share with the world and your story is so unique and, and amazing yeah. and you've overcome such adversity. So I'm really yeah. excited to dig into yep. some of this today. Thank you. Appreciate it. So before we get into your entrepreneurial journey, because uh -huh. I think there's a lot to learn about your childhood, uh -huh. we're going to go there. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your upbringing. Tell me about your childhood because yeah. it, 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 you need to talk about that in order yeah. to understand how you yeah. thrived and survived through your entrepreneurial journey. And, I, and I'm actually very curious. Yeah, absolutely. Um, grew up here in Southern California. My mom and dad, amazing, still together. Parents, they, they actually chose to raise my brother and sister. I have an older sister and a younger brother and the middle child. And they made every sacrifice they could to send us to private school. So I am a function of the local private schools here. I definitely gave my mom and dad a run for their money uh, growing up. If parenting, you know, were an exercise, uh, yeah, I gave them everything, every value of it um, <laughs> that they could get from it. Um, I don't think I was, I was a knucklehead uh, growing up and I um, was and, and still have, you know, a, a difficulty with authority and difficulty with following rules and difficulty with things that uh, make parenting difficult as I grew up uh, in the private school sector and then I ended up playing, I was a water polo player as well, played water polo. My original life plan was to become a high school math teacher, uh, which I did for 12 years, and, and live a, a high school math teacher's world. Most people know ma high school math teachers is tough to make a living off of, so I needed to start a business on the side. Mm. Uh, and that's why I started a summer swim lesson business my sophomore year of college. Um, and that's what kind of uh, got me through that. I the similarity between what it takes to uh, start a business and what it takes to break the rules at home mm. are uncomfortably similar, similar to me. Yeah, I think that's what I love about being an entrepreneur is you really yeah. can be a rebel yeah. and feel like, wow, this is okay yeah. here. Yeah. I can actually thrive by being a rebel, it, not following rules. Yep. Uh, couldn't agree more. Yeah, and it's like that same mindset, that same frame of mind is what um, is embedded and is there, and what creates that entrepreneurial kind of world there. Um, so yeah. So okay, uh -huh. so rebel growing up, uh -huh. I, middle I wasn't child, like a total, total. I mean, like just, a, I mean, it was. I wasn't like you're not off a the troublemaker. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're not a troublemaker. I, but I, I, I'd get. I wouldn't get good grades in conduct in you know school. That was definitely mm -hmm. something that was a high priority in my family. And I would get in my was I you know extreme on the sex, drugs, and rock and roll. No, I wasn't like totally, totally out of line. I definitely stayed in some boundaries, right? But uh, at the same time, I definitely would uh, question authority a lot. Um, Isn't that up. where does that come from? Yeah, for you. Um, is that the middle child syndrome or is that, yeah, it, I mean, it could be, I mean, I, I don't know how fair, I don't truly believe in first, second, middle, last children kind of yeah. stereotypes there, you know, for whatever reason, the way I tick, the way my brain works is I enjoy being right and I enjoy being correct and, uh, I'm willing to go through a lot of sacrifice to prove that. Um, and I'm going willing to stick my uh, head out there in a lot of places um, because of that desire to do that. Mm. Um, so that's I, I think. I love that. Yeah. 
Okay, and, so you finish uh-huh. high school. You go, yep. Do you call, go to college? Yep, go to college. Okay, go to college, become yep. a student, uh, yep. become a teacher. Yep. What are you teaching? Um, and actually before teaching, one of the interesting things in my path was when I was 20 years old as a sophomore in, in college, um, I was a swim instructor the year before for uh, teaching swim lessons, getting paid, I don't know, like maybe 10 bucks an hour or so. And I did some math and this doesn't take you know calculus to figure out that they were paying a lot more for me to be doing the swim lessons. So mm. at that time, I said to myself, heck, I can do, I think they were paying 50 bucks an hour for me to teach at 10 bucks an hour, which is a pretty big delta there. And so I said, hey, I can do this. I can, I can actually uh, do this on my own. And so that sophomore of my, my sophomore year, I started my first business, mm. uh, which was a swim lesson business. And I got flyers. I called it Chris's Swimmers. I didn't even know how to make a business name or anything. And I remember I went to the local Wells Fargo and I was like, I need a checking account. And they said, hey, come on, bud. Like, let's figure some things out. You need what's called a DBA, a fictitious business name. And so I just started in that whole that world of Chris's swimmers as a sophomore and fast flyers out door to door hiding from security guards who were trying to kick me off of uh, the properties and everything and hiding in bushes and passing flyers out and the phone started to ring and um, from there it was like wow I I can do this you actually had a cash generating business at 17 yes uh, a little less, uh, about Six, 20 years old yeah sophomore 20, of, okay. of, of college year wow. uh, was that first you know entrepreneurial world and at the time there, I also started a um, tutoring business. Okay, I graduated locally from UCI. And the tutoring business, uh, I would go into people's homes and tutor them in math and help them out with their, their kids with their mathematical studies. Um, something interesting happened at that point. And what, what I was doing is I, I would go into tons of houses once a week. I'd be in people's houses, sitting in their family room, sitting in their kitchen, helping their students with their algebra and, and so forth. And what's fascinating to me about that window was I I, I developed a theory, whether I believe the theory or not anymore is irrelevant. I believed the theory at the time. And the theory that I developed was the bigger the house, the richer the family. Mm. How to say either positive or negative, the worse they treated you. Mm. The smaller the house. I had one family that was in a tiny, because I would go into these huge mansions that had gates to get in and, you know, like these real wealthy situations. I'd go, and you're just there for an hour once a week, like a fly on the wall. And they forget that you're there. Yeah. And you hear everything happening. You hear what's going on. And if you're doing an, you know, an Algebra 1 lesson that doesn't take a lot of mental capacity for me, right? maybe some of the pre-calculus lessons I had to really focus on and I couldn't be eavesdropping, I could spend a lot of energy absorbing that family. Mm. And then I'd go to you know, the, the smallest house that I tutored in. They made me dinner every time I was there. Oh, wow. And Christmas would come along. And these families with the smaller homes that I knew were sacrificing to get me there to tutor their families were the most generous, the most loving. And it really, and, and, and from there developed a theory that, like I said, whether I believe it or not, I don't know. At the time, I did believe it, that, you know, that there was something coherently wrong or, 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 or not being aligned healthy. With, being wealthy. with being wealthy. Yeah. Mm. Um, from that, I, uh, I decided to go into a, tier of t- uh, a career of teaching. And that really was one of the motivating factors to say, hey, let's go in to be a math teacher. Mm. Right? And I'll be a math teacher, coach water polo as a water polo player. And that originally was designed. And then the, the swim lesson business that I was having in the summer was just going to supplement the income from a teacher. And I would live happily ever after. And... Uh, Lo and behold, life doesn't work out often like it's planned. I'm no longer teaching, obviously, uh, and it's been a path to get there. All right, so let's. Sorry, Ash. So no, you got to tell me if I'm no, going off the rocker. You let me know. Dude, you're doing. You're doing great. There's a couple things yeah. I want to unpack because I think it's gonna. Yeah. It's gonna show up again later because uh-huh. I do have the benefit of knowing a little bit of your story. But uh-huh. that's a really fascinating framework you just said. That like, mm-hmm. by being a teacher, by being a tutor, uh-huh. and walking into these homes, mm-hmm. you created a narrative that. Mm-hmm. I might as well be normal and happy than rich and unhappy. Yes. And yeah. that that was a framework that you observed in life and yes. sort of I think I think yeah. that and people will hear this in your in your next few entrepreneurial uh-huh. journeys of like because uh-huh. there's a lot of resistance to that. Uh-huh. Then there's uh-huh. as you as you find success you're like, "Well, uh-huh. do I really want this success?" Yes. yes. 
because I may yes. be unhappy. Yeah. yeah. Does that show up for you later? Um, I've made a promise with the with the success that I'm experiencing in the business entrepreneurial world, and my wife holds me to this promise that it will never be at the sacrifice of time. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's true for you. And that, and that's something that uh, that luckily my wife holds me to, and 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 I and I and I do not regret my use of time. I yeah. pride myself in picking the kids up from school. I work East Coast hours. I'm not there for a morning routine um, for the kids, um, so to speak. Um, and so I'm relatively comfortable with that. It's because of this world that right. something like that um, developed. Fascinating. Yeah. It, yeah, go ahead. Well, I think, I think a lot uh -huh. of people can relate to that, right? Uh -huh. Is that they, they see the world at a young age uh -huh. in whatever frameworks they see it. Uh -huh. And then it defines what they believe is real, uh -huh. what they believe is possible, uh -huh. what they believe will make them happy. Uh -huh. So I think that's a really interesting concept for me personally. Uh -huh. Like I saw a lot of successful people also find familial stress uh -huh. and, and like not closeness, mm -hmm. I, I will mm -hmm. say like that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really quite know it until I was starting to achieve some level of material success. Uh -huh. I'm like, wow, this sucks. Uh -huh. This is not uh -huh. what I thought it was supposed to be. Uh -huh. And so uh -huh. I, I think that's a really good I, framework for people to think about, like uh -huh. where are their narratives coming from and, uh -huh. and why do we believe, like you do a really great job uh -huh. of, and we'll get to time in a minute, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but you really do protect your time. Uh -huh. And you're really good at that. Uh -huh. You're. We'll, we'll get into that yeah. in a minute. Yeah. So let's yeah. talk about yeah. teaching. So yeah. you were teaching yeah. for a bit. Why yep. did you leave teaching? Um, left teaching. I taught. I taught for 12 years. I uh, met my wife coaching water polo. Uh, and she was a, a coach on the staff as well. And I was uh, teaching math, algebra, geometry, pre-cal. Um, slowly over the 12 years, the way I like to describe it is that uh, the the appreciation was deteriorating. Mm. Um, I felt less and less appreciated. I, I have a role in the in not feeling appreciated significantly. I don't want to make it sound like this was just having it to me because I was an active player in it as well. And as that kind of appreciation was deteriorating, the utils from the swim lesson world and, and the small business were, were were growing, and the fun of that, and the engagement of that, and the learning that I had to do in order to pull these successful summers off. So you had this kind of thing that was kind of decreasing. This other thing. A, Put it a different way. Today, when I see teachers, my kids' teachers or anybody, I just want to hug them and tell them I love them and thank you so much. Like I have like this desire to like tell the teaching profession, thank you for everything that you're doing because, mm. um, as you know, it's they you're don't on that it. side. It's it's and it's hard. It's hard to feel consistently over a career as a teacher, mm. um, and I suffered from that. From that. V so you're talking about actual. from the kids or from the community Kim, yes, or just parents, like feedback. The, yeah, yeah. We're talking about feedback yes. almost. Than coaching as well. Coaching is even more extreme. The parents are very involved in the coaching and and feeling unappreciated uh, for uh, what I was putting into the career was something that, that, that was getting less and less fascinating. every year. So we, and at the time, the swim lessons, we uh, this was in 2015, my wife and I, I had a two-year-old son at the time, and we had an amazing summer of swim lessons. We expanded to Northern California, and so we had we had an amazing summer, and we had a hundred thousand uh, dollars in the bank account. Uh, we had a small tutoring business that was going to help out as well, and, and you're doing all this on the side of the, of, the yes, teaching of career. Teaching. Yes, and. We were driving, my, my wife lives in Northern California, a long ride drive home from, from uh, Sacramento area, Rockland, where we have some of our most fascinating conversations on the road there. And we came to the conclusion in that drive that I was going to, why not quit teaching and get a travel trailer that we would take a three month trip of, across America. So a big circle. We'd drive to Maine for three weeks, then we'd drive south and we'd come back through Texas. And so sure enough, that's what we did. I, I hung it up from teaching and we took a three-month trip across America. With a two-year-old. Yeah, it was a three-year-old then. Cooper was three years Amazing. old, a travel trailer behind us, uh, camping the entire way. We made it to Eastport, Maine, which is the most northeastern uh, part of America. Um, and yeah, did a three-month trip. Uh, was that a reset? Yes, mm. yes. And I remember when I quit teaching, and I told my wife this. I said, okay, just so you know, this is our game plan, okay? Normally, plans don't go like you, 
the, the, that you think they're going to go. A plan is a plan. A plan is a plan. But I was like, and I'm, I'm hesitant saying that because it feels so good. We're going to survive on swim lessons and we're going to expand to Texas the next summer and everything's, but, but, but I just said it out of necessity, right? <laughs> that like, just so you know, things might not go the way we think they're going to go. CYA. Yep. And so uh, that's the summer of 2015. Coming in 2016, I get time to prepare. We launch to Texas. We're going to be doing swim lessons in Texas, in California and Texas now. And uh, we're attempting to double the business, you know, from one summer to the next. And the summer of 2015 came uh, and then went, and it was a disaster. Um, we, by the time I got caught up with the accounting, um, which was like mid-September, our goal that summer was to hit a million dollars in top-line revenue, hopefully have 800000 in expenses, and to have a profit of somewhere around $200,000, where we could then live till the next summer, right? And then we could have nine months to decide what we're going to do. Well, that did not work out like planned at all. Um, and we uh, funded the whole business with... Uh, uh, Visa was our funder, plastic, Visa, credit cards, plastic, Visa, okay. MasterCard, a little bit of American Express in there. They decided to fund our business. <laughs> and so we had a lot of credit card debt. We had a business. We ended up making $2,000 that summer. Wow. On a million uh, dollars revenue. On a million. Uh, we ended up hitting 700000 in, in, in top line top revenue, revenue. And it was like 698000 in expenses. And, and a lot of that on revenue. debt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fun. Uh, yeah. Okay, so then what? So we had an infamous, and, and this it was one of the moments, I've heard the term sliding glass moments, which I don't really understand why it's sliding glass, but anyway, this is a term that a moment in life where it's like a, uh, a memorable moment. And I had a conversation with my wife in the backyard, and I said, we are not looking good. I used an F word. <laughs> We're not good at all. This is a disaster. We didn't make any money this summer. We had we had cash in the bank, so I knew that we could pay our mortgage and stuff, but we were not looking good. And I said, there were tears involved. It was an emotional conversation in our backyard. And uh, we had cash in the bank. I knew that we could make some mortgages for the maybe foreseeable future. It was mid-September. We talked about getting back into teaching. What was going through your mind? Oh, just fail, fail. How, how, I, I failed. I did it. Like It, it, it caught up to me. That rebel... That uh, that rebel in me that you know would was what went how I went through as a kid uh, has finally caught up. Huh. And who was I to think? Why did I think? How did I put our families in this position? Um, crushed. 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 I I did have a little bit of a plan. I said, Hey, look, uh, it's too late to get back into teaching. I said we we could take our swim lesson model and potentially start a music business, um, and you know instead of teaching little kids, how let's to double down. Swim. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, so let wait. So is it is it fair to say yeah. that at that moment, mm -hmm. sliding glass door moment, mm -hmm. that that was in that moment, in that part of your life was probably one of your lowest moments? Oh yes. Yeah. I, I, absolutely. I've heard a stat that uh, entrepreneurs um, go broke on average of three times in their life. And I'm just like, oh God, just let it be one. <laughs> like, I, let, let my I one, don't <laughs> I don't need to learn anymore. Like that was, that was powerful enough. Uh, <laughs> All the learning has happened, <laughs> you know, like it was um, a dude. moment. And you mentioned double down, which is so fascinating. And um, after that um, conversation with my wife, I was walking back into the house and our four-year-old at the time, he, he looked at me in the eyes and we had a moment there that I'll, I'll never forget. And it's hard even to put the words into it. Um, and as he looked, cause he looked me in the eyes and the, the first thought that I had and the first thing was just like, I'm so sorry. Like, I, I like, mm. I don't, I don't know how like you're going to, I don't know how to come to like, it's my job to put food on the table. It's a pretty big deal. Putting food on the table. Like it's my job. And I, I'm not too sure where, where the food's going to be coming from. Like this is a disaster. Like, and so I had all of those thoughts and emotions that were like, that it just right there. And this is after moment. a three month, beautiful trip yeah. around the country, yeah. yep. living in La La Land. Yes, exactly. With him, showing him the whole, the whole United world. States. <laughs> Oh my God. Talk about now, contrast. 
Now, those thoughts, I think, are normal thoughts to have in that moment. Sure. Um, the thoughts that were not necessarily normal was as I was having those thoughts, I, it was like, I'm sorry, bud, I'm going to double down and do it again. <laughs> like, And it, it was a real uncomfortable, not glorified at all, like, yeah, but like, sorry, I got to keep doing it. Okay, bud. so was that instinctual? Yeah. So let's talk about that because that's yeah. not a normal thought. Okay, so yeah. you just realized. I wouldn't even say that the business failed. It okay. didn't succeed. Yeah, all right, deal. Right, right. Okay. So you're like, okay. this shit ain't working. Okay, yep. it's not working. Yep. You can you can't go back to teaching because you miss the window of time. Yep. Right. You're yep. in you're into right. fall now, so yep. you can't start teaching. You're in October, November. Yep. yep. And now you decide. Well, let's try again, but let's try a different uh -huh. category. Uh huh. So. Uh -huh. What's the process in that thinking? Is yeah. it, it like, why not just try again at swimming another season? I guess you, yep. you ran out of cash, so you have yeah. no choice but to pivot. Correct. Okay. It, swim lesson season doesn't start until right. you know, the next. So you're just going to burn cash until the next yes. summer. Okay. Yep. So you have no yep. choice but to pivot. Yes. Okay. Pure necessity. Mm, I love that. Pure necessity. Okay, so you pivot had, to... If I could have gotten a job as a math teacher that next Monday, I, I would have had it. But it was too late. So maybe there was a blessing there. Yeah. That you ran one month too late. Like one month. Yeah. You could have yeah. been on, You could have been a teacher today yeah. if it wasn't for one month in your entire life, right? Potentially. Isn't that fascinating? It really is. And it's... Uh, but yeah, it, uh, it was quite quite a moment uh there that i definitely will never forget so then if i um so what ends up happening is the the, the music business saves our ass right it, it 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 brings in some cash we can uh we can we can survive like we can get relatively comfortable i would say and we start we have a music business the next summer comes along we have a dumbing down version of the swim lesson business that does pretty well and so we ran this for uh, for two years we ran this music business and the swim lesson business and I looked at and both businesses were doing like I said decent the, the cash flow was definitely positive and they were paying the bills uh, we did still have a, a hundred thousand dollars in credit card debt from the disastrous summer that we were paying fifteen hundred dollars a month in interest on and we couldn't chip away at that and mm -hmm. we didn't chip away at that. And I, after about two years of this, I said to my wife, I said, hey, look, these models, these business models, swim lessons and music, are going to give us no security in life. Well, let's go. Let's, yeah. Before you go there, Fire. I want to, I really want to, because I think it goes into the business you are okay. running now, which is uh -huh. Happy Spa Dogs. Uh -huh. Explain to the, the audience mm -hmm. the structure of these companies. So... Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. are these are scalable businesses. Not uh -huh. like you're doing the tutoring. You're uh -huh. you're. Yep. Uh, how do I explain this? I guess you're you're recruiting yep. tutors. You're yep. recruiting swim yep. teachers. Yep. Yep. How are you doing that? Yep. I would like to explain that. And uh -huh. then you're also recruiting clients. Uh -huh. And how are you doing that? Yep. Because the f the process yep. of this yep. is replicatable. Yes. And that's what I want to. Yes. Highlight. So yeah, absolutely. So all three are all three businesses, basically the same business in my mind. Right. They do something different, but they all feel like we don't run swim lessons anymore. But it still feels like big arm swimmers, which it's is the same business. architecture. It's the same architecture, and we find you know two groups of people: one person that has a skill or can learn a skill. We sometimes we trade teach the skill, uh, which is what we're doing now in dog grooming. Right. And we find the, uh, a group of people willing to do uh, provide a service, a willing people looking for the service. The clients are mostly Google, uh, PPC uh, campaigns, and uh, different. That's a majority of it's 90, 95% is right there. And we find those two parties and we match them together. Uh, we then, what, what, what they pay compared to what the other one receives has a delta there, and there is basically where the, the profit the lies, the margin there. Yeah. So you've built an architecture yeah. for this funnel. Yes, yes. 
all in-home services too. All of these businesses are in-home. That's another important mm. kind of structural understanding. We uh, the swim lessons are in people's backyards. The music lessons are on their piano in their in no. their living room, and the dog grooming is in their driveway in our, in our van. So all three models are in-home service so models. So you the logistics, yes. the structure, mm-hmm. the customer in, the yes. customer acquisition, the yep. teaching acquisition, or the yep. the drivers or the yep. car whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. That that entire architecture is replicatable. I think that's yes. really one yeah. of the most fascinating things about your entrepreneurial uh-huh. journey is uh-huh. you've had two uh-huh. uh, leapfrogs uh-huh. into what you're now uh-huh. running, yep. but the architecture is the same. And yep. what I love about that story yep. is that I think there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are doing something and they're doing uh-huh. one thing and perhaps uh-huh. they're not satisfied or they're not uh-huh. sure what to do. Uh-huh. And they think about jumping into another lake. Uh-huh. But sometimes uh-huh. you don't need to jump into a completely different lake. Uh-huh. You just got to learn about what is it here that yep. I'm doing yep. that I'm really good at, yep. but I'm just not in the right segment. And yep. I think that's what you learned yep. twice yep. over. Yes. It's like, okay, yes. yeah, swimming lessons is one thing. Tutoring yes. is one thing. But like, is yes. that the right segment yeah. that I can use this process? Yes. That's really yes the, um, the magic thing I found in your story. Yes. Um, and I think a piece of that puzzle as well, which I do find interesting, is people often ask, I don't know how to do, do dog grooming. Um, my, right. I don't know how to groom a dog. My joke is I don't even groom my hair. I'm bald, <laughs> right? It's a, a little a dog, right? Um, it's such a joke that reminds me of my dad because it's just such a dad joke. And I, I say it way too much. You're there, bro. I, I enjoy it more than anybody <laughs> receiving the joke. But some people, a lot of people are fascinated by how do you have, have you have a business that you don't know how to do the trade in, right? Because I have no idea the trade of dog grooming. Right. right with music i didn't know the trade of music business now swim lessons was one that that's what i started with i knew that i knew how to do that i knew how to do that and i th- i think it's a, i love managing jobs that i don't know how to do hmm. i think it is so much easier it's the jobs that i know how to do that i'm a horrible leader manager of huh. and because you're over yeah, I know how to do it. I tell them exactly what micromanaging. I tell them exactly how to do it, where to do it, when to do it, everything. I'm in there. I'm in their business because mm-hmm. I know the best way to do it. Whereas when you take a, when you try and when, for me when I try and manage a position that you have no idea how to do, I create a scorecard with them. I'll work with them to create a scorecard, create what success is, and I tell them just go do it. I I, I mean I have no idea how to do it. That's their job to figure out. It's my job to help guide them through a scorecard and through. I love it. My, our office staff right now. In okay, the wait, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So let's go let's go. So we go from mm-hmm. we go from swimming uh-huh. to music. Uh-huh. Now give us the explanation of Happy Spa Dogs. Yes. So we pivot into Happy Spa Dogs. Yes. Can I go for a quick in- interesting part of that yes. pivot? Um, from the music and the swim lessons, our client wasn't long enough. We couldn't find financial security. As another moment that I almost got back into teaching. And I said to my wife, after those two businesses, this is in 2018 now, I said, hey, I, I think I should get back in the classroom. I said, we're not going to find financial security. To swim lessons, uh, you learn how to swim in two weeks and you're done. You never get swim lessons again. Right. Music lessons, somebody, a, a, a six-year-old is going to learn piano lessons for maybe six months and then soccer season starts or they're not practicing enough or, and then they're done. And so uh, the life of our client was just way too short. So I said, I, we're not going to find financial security here. I should get back into the classroom so we can be financially secure. And Jade said to me, my wife said, why don't we give this one more shot? And I was like, one more shot, Jade, like, we're still in a hundred thousand dollars in credit card debt. Like we don't have any one more shot margin of error here. Like we really need to. We don't have any more shots to give anything. Is and her idea or your idea? Her idea. And she said, "I don't care. What's the worst?" She goes, "What's the worst that can happen?" And it's one of those amazing anxiety kind of things to do. What's the worst that can happen? I said, "We're going to go bankrupt. <laughs> it's terrible." She goes, "Who cares? We'll go bankrupt. We'll move to Phoenix. Move somewhere cheaper, and we'll." live happily ever after i was like are you serious and that you got three kids by now two kids by now good question we had this was in 2015 we had two kids the third one was a fascinating yeah. conversation yeah. to have with two kids oh oh it was it's it, cool to see that you can still take that risk at two yeah. kids like it's possible i mean this is it's pretty crazy i mean so but she said, hey, she said, hey, look, you're having a lot of fun in small business. She could tell that I was drawn to small business. She'd know that I was into it. She said, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's run it. She goes, give it one more shot. If it doesn't work after this one, 
get back in the classroom. The other piece, though, was that as a teacher, when you do feel the feeling after a good day of teaching is like no other. Mm. If you get done and the bell rings at 2.30 as a math teacher and you just crushed like the, the pre-cal <laughs> lesson and you know that the knowledge is just was just like it fed was to there. And not only that, but everyone had a great time. Everyone had fun. It was engaging. Like, and that bell rings at 2.30. That feeling is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And I hadn't gotten that feeling in the previous businesses. Mm. Um, the businesses did nothing fraudulent. They did nothing. They were completely on the up and up as far as that goes. But as far as feel good, it just wasn't there. Mm. And I'm a firm believer that, you know, another lens to put it is that, hey, news to the Western culture, we're all going to die at some point. No, no matter what, like new headline, right? <laughs> and when we die, we're going to have either a second to think about it, or we're going to have six months to think about it. I hope I'm going to get six months, but I won't be able to decide that. And we're going to have in that moment, we're going to be able to think back on our career, whether it was fulfilling or not. Mm. Teaching make is, is, an, is a cool path to that feeling. Mm. Knowing the impact that you made as a teacher is a really, really cool path. Mm. And there's part of me that wanted to get back in the classroom for that and for that reason. And we decided, we said, okay, we'll give it one more shot, but there's one more important thing. This has to feel good. And this next business has to be a feel good business. Yeah, there's going to be profits for sure. Definitely in it for that, but it's got to feel good, and that's what the the goal was with this next endeavor, which then landed us in mobile. So then I studied a bunch of markets. So now what's the business going to be? So I studied. So you had yeah. Yes, let's let's hold this down because yeah. you have a criteria. Yes. Explain the criteria because this is yes. super important. This was summer of uh, two thousand. Oh, this is two thousand eighteen, and there's three criteria that I studied. Wanted one. I wanted to be recession proof. At the time in 2018, felt like the economy needed to correct itself, um, and a recession was bound to happen. So we wanted something that was, they call it recession, nothing's recession proof, recession resistant deal. Second one, a long lifeline of the client. Okay, we had just gotten done with two businesses, like I said, that had a very short lifeline. We wanted a long life of the client. That's the second criteria. And the third criteria was it to be non-seasonal. Uh, we just got done with a summer rush business and yep. a very seasonal atmosphere. So those are the three things, recession resistant, uh, long lifeline of the client and non-seasonal. And I then went to the, you know, WWW, World Wide Web, and just started fast studying in industries. And, and you uh, fell into dog grooming. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, and then I'm allergic to dogs, right? So, <laughs> which everyone just gets the biggest <laughs> kick out of. And which means you have to have non-allergenic dogs, which means we've always had schnauzers and dogs that, that, that mat when they're, if you're allergic to dogs, the, the hair mats. And so Jade was always, my wife's always looking for a dog groomer. And so I said, hey, what about mobile dog grooming? And started looking at the stats of that. And it was, it hit all three out of the, out of the water. And so, yeah, so, we, yeah. And, and tell us where you're at right now. Yes. So we currently have, um, uh, two, there's two corporations within one. There's 55 full-time employees, uh, working with us. We have a fleet of 31 vans having a, a ton of fun Amazing. along the process. Yeah. That's amazing. From, yeah. And that was the, in 2018, Slowly Did you ever that. think it would have gotten here? It was designed to. It, was designed to. <laughs> um, it still blows my mind, and I, I'm still taken back at times with it. Work with it. it and you're it just sort of at the beginning. Yeah, that's what we hope. You know, we're looking forward yeah. to to that. You know, and to to that to that that future. So yeah, what's the vision? You've yeah. you know, I love your story so much, and I yeah. think it's such a fascinating. It's it's such a good story in terms of how you went through it, how you uh -huh. turned, how you pivoted, uh -huh. how you dealt with failure, uh -huh. how you thought about okay, what's it going to really take? What's mm -hmm. my formula? And then fell into it. Yeah. What's next? Oh, um, continuing to 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 find fun puzzles to solve. Yeah. Um, 
we uh, have uh, we met as a leadership group this last Wednesday and had a vision day, had an amazing day, and developed some really really fun goals for the business, and uh, continuing to use the business as a as you know kind of the pace for growth. You know that's the pace horse, and challenging ourselves to grow as people as the business grows. Um, and what do you What do you spend most of your time on? Most of my time right now is spent in uh, with my leadership team. A lot of interactions there, which I have great time doing. Uh, a lot of analytics. Because yeah, it's a very it, data driven business. It is very data driven and trying to see trends and trying to, you know, analyze from uh, a, a data, mm-hmm. trying to view the business from objective views from, from data, right. uh, and then presenting the data and trying to uh, go with conclusions on the data. Um, those are the, the big ones uh, building a future, building next products, next things, next right. services that we're going to be doing, and having fun in that future. I, I go to sleep every night in the future. I have maybe too much time in the future. I remember you telling uh, me you don't touch cats. Yeah. No. Why no cats? Oh man, cats are. Uh, <laughs> they, they don't give warning before they strike. They're too dangerous. <laughs> so it, it, I, I didn't know this going into it. You read about it. So yeah, cats will just strike and they'll, they've taken the groomers out. Strike from, like yeah, claws or, or teeth. And if you get hit by a cat, if a cat strikes. It's like immediately hospitalization because of like, oh. The depth of the cut. Yeah. And like, and it, I guess they're dirty. The claws are dirty. The mouth's dirty. Like, ah. So we, yeah, we do not service cats anymore. And the other thing is I feel dogs. like that's such a layup, right? Yeah. But, it, yeah. but not so. No, no. Uh, dogs, but also give warning. Uh, which is another interesting thing. So a dog will, before a dog growl strikes, they'll growl, the, the, the hair on the back will grow up. And, and our groomers who are professionals, they know the warning signs. Uh, you and I maybe wouldn't tend to necessarily know if they die. No. Hey, don't touch the dog. They know the warning signs so they can protect themselves. Cats just strike without warning. It's, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what are some of the lessons or the challenges that you faced in the dro- dog grooming business that perhaps you didn't anticipate? Um, or what are what are some challenges you're facing now? The I would say, you know, the the profile of a dog groomer is a very very interesting profile. Somebody who gets into dog grooming and who's already been a dog groomer. So our field staff is dog groomers, obviously, and that's a really interesting and fun, challenging world to explore. Um, Oftentimes, their version of happiness is not my version of happiness. Maybe it's not even close to my version of happiness. And I think early on in the business, I had the assumption that what what made me happy would make them happy. And learned more and more, and it was a challenge when you say, well, what do you mean that doesn't make you happy? Well, what do you mean that's not what you're looking for? Because um, there, it's a it's a, a group of people that's uh, that's unlike me um, in that way. Is that fair? Yeah. Uh, and that will be an ongoing. Uh, an, it's an infinite game there. Yeah. That's an ongoing world there that we're exploring. We're getting better at more and more, uh, but it's something that we continue to to work on. You um, are a constant learner. Uh, you read almost a book a week or a yeah. book a day. <laughs> Um, every time yeah. I see you before we meet, you're yeah. reading. Yeah. Give us a couple of books that you feel are, are really great recommendations yeah. that you're st- studying Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. Yeah. I've been mowing through books lately. Um, it's pretty, uh, fascinating. By the way, as can I go back to my childhood real quick? Yes. We have time. We have plenty of time. I, I, I could hardly read in elementary school. Mm. A quick story, which I find so fast, because when I say, so right now, yeah, I'm, I go through probably four or five books a week right now. Um, a lot, a lot of books. It's f- so, so fun. Um, back in the day, I, uh, mo- I was never diagnosed dyslexic. Uh, who knows? Who really cares? But there was something definitely off with, with my brain and reading. In your absorption. Yeah, and, and, and in elementary school, the teacher, would, we'd play popcorn. Do you ever play popcorn when you read? Uh-huh. So the way popcorn would work is like somebody in the class reads like a paragraph, and when they're done, they go, popcorn, a oh, sheesh, and then right? right? And then a oh, sheesh yes. reads a paragraph, and then they go, popcorn. So we'd be popcorn, okay? And the two f- 
fun things that would happen in popcorn for the class. One was if any boy popcorn a girl or if any girl popcorn a boy, crush for sure, right? Game <laughs> over. That's like next level like attraction. Okay. okay. So you very rarely went across gender lines. It's just okay. the girls stayed with the girls, boys would stay with the boys, and then there'd be a crossover and it would be a big to do. That was one interesting thing. The second thing was everybody, all of my buddies would popcorn me. And the reason they popcorn me they know. is because I didn't know how to read. <laughs> So and I would and I would make up words so that I could sound confident. So I would read and I would make up words. And they'd just be laughing and giggling, and then the next I'd, I'd popcorn someone else and they popcorn me back oh. until the teacher finally goes, "Okay, boys and girls, no more popcorning, Chris." Chris. Chris and oh, that made it that much better. The one person that's off limits for popcorn. <laughs> And you so, know, it's go ahead. Finish. Yeah. No, it just, you know, and so, and so my brain did not naturally work with reading with at reading. all. And, and I still resonate with that kind. So I'm that I'm still in like, yeah. So now I can, like I said, I can, well, I think that's books. really, I, yeah. I have been, I am the same way. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't read as much as you do, uh -huh. but I uh -huh. recently just got into reading Interesting. and my whole life I felt I was that kid where yeah. if I got ca called popcorn, uh -huh. I'd uh -huh. have anxiety. Uh -huh. My palms uh -huh. would start sweating. Uh -huh. I'd fumble through the words. Yeah. I didn't know what, what the yeah. hell I was yeah. reading. <laughs> and there's something there. Yeah. And I got to really study this. Why uh -huh. is this? Uh -huh. I think it's a development issue yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah. And anyways, not to get yeah. lost in that rabbit yeah. hole, but I, I, I feel you, bro. Yeah. And but now I really am, am enjoying reading, and <laughs> yep. I enjoy. I read uh -huh. And you've recommended books to me. Uh, I actually just bought yeah. the uh, Think Again okay, book nice. that you recommended. Yep. Um, yep. yep. So yep. yeah. So what That's are a couple of books that you're um, enjoying? Now? One's uh, Solve for Happiness. Um, it's got a, a smiley face on it. I forget. It's called Solve for Happiness. Uh, mind blowing. It was a really really fun book. Um, and if anybody, hang on till the end because at the end. They go this incredible place where they attempt to explain why there for sure is a God. And wow. like I said, mind-blowing stuff that wouldn't even begin. But it was a really cool way of, uh, of doing it and getting there. Uh, Solve for Happiness was one. Just this week, I uh, did uh, Dan Miller's. It's called like the um, Enlightenment, 12 Steps to Enlightenment or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. That was very fascinating. Really enjoyed that. I read, I've uh, been reading a few one on, on customers and the forever transaction was one of them uh, that I recently read. I really enjoyed. Um, all the books I read are either going to be in business or going to be in self-help. Uh, to me, they're two in one. And you, and you, I've seen you really explore this. You know, yeah. you're at a constant self-development journey. Yes. What are you yeah. exploring in your own self right now? As of lately, it's a pretty easy one that I'm like kind of, em I guess, a little bit embarrassed to say. That's uh, kind of self worth, mm. and uh, and whether I'm worthy of of certain things, and and um, trying that lens on um, the Dan Miller's book on Twelve Enlightenments. I just, like I said, read this week, and I was like, oh, this is pretty good. But I'm I'm pretty enlightened. I'm like, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to read this and be like, I, I got this. Like. I'm sure it'll tell me, is this going to describe me? You know? And it's the first chapter in the book is on self-worth. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> and it's just, you know, it's just one of those things. And uh, that the more, the, the more I read, the, the more you learn, you're not too, are you learning more or are you learning what you don't know? <laughs> yeah. You know, and it just opens this whole world there. And I'd say in my personal journey, um, Personally, it's it's a lot. My uh, wife and I's conversations. Uh, we've had a lot of conversations there. I plan on being in this probably for a little bit and trying to get comfortable with it. Thank you for bringing it up. I'm glad that I can uh, express this now yeah. to, to to the point that we're doing right now. Yeah, no, I think I think a lot of people are there. Uh -huh. I feel like I'm there sometimes, uh -huh. you know, in in uh -huh. like, and I think some of it doesn't necessarily have to do with success uh -huh. or financial success uh -huh. or families so like even your family like uh -huh. am i really worthy of being uh -huh. a dad to these two kids uh -huh. or am i uh -huh. am i worthy of leading these people am i yeah. worthy of the yeah. financial abundance i'm having or yeah. all that and so i think there's there are gifts there yeah and i and i'm also exploring those yeah. things so i don't know if i have the answer but is there um, ever gonna come a day that somebody just feels totally worthy 
You know, I, I don't, well, I think that, well, what is the, what is the, what is the precursor or the post of, of worthiness, yeah. right? So like, why do we yeah. want to feel worthy? Yeah. Yeah. Is it because we want to feel free or we want to feel, you know, enough or yeah. like worthiness is just one, right? Yeah. 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 yeah one yeah. thing worthiness off for me, worthiness is like, I'm not enough. Mm-hmm. I'm not enough for X mm-hmm. yeah. or I don't have enough yeah. for X. Yeah. So for me, it's either being yeah. enough or, or yeah. being free. Yeah. And, and I think that yeah. the answer is no. Yeah. I think that like the constant mental journey of, yeah. I shouldn't say we're, we're never enough or never free. What I mean is that I've seen people at all aspects of life, yeah. which is what I, why I love uh-huh. this podcast uh-huh. of like, they're financially free, but they uh-huh. don't feel free. Uh-huh. You know, they have the uh-huh. most beautiful family, but they don't feel free. Uh-huh. You know, they, they yep. can do whatever they want, whenever they want, but they still don't feel free. So yeah. like, there's always something that we're seeking and yeah. searching for. And yeah. I think that's the journey of life. I don't think that's yep. necessarily wrong, but it's, it's the journey. Yeah. Buckle up, have fun on it. Buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> and you're, and you know, you're, you absorb knowledge so quickly yeah. and you adapt so quickly and you try things and you're not afraid of risk. And yeah. so I just, I wanted to ask you that question because- uh. You know, uh-huh. you're just getting started. Man. Uh-huh. You're just getting started. Uh-huh. So, anyways, yeah. fire. Yeah, let's see. What else? Uh, what is what is? I guess what's some what's some gifts of gold that you would share to another entrepreneur that's perhaps in their small business or uh-huh. dealing with a difficult time. Yeah. Maybe they don't feel like you know what. I'm not sure if I'm at the right place or the right uh-huh. company or the right uh-huh. industry, and uh-huh. it's not working. Yeah but I can't put my finger on it. What's yeah. the right question to ask? What's the right advice? Um, something that comes to mind. Is or talk to your fun. wife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talk to my wife. <laughs> She'll tell you. I, I, I think in moments like that, and when and I'm in and out, is I, I think the important thing is not necessarily the solution of that, that particular problem or that particular issue that might be keeping up at night or causing those thoughts whether the solution there is to you know quit their job start a new job quit their business double down on their business whatever the solution of that particular thing um, is i don't think that's of importance what i try and remind myself have fun finding find fun in the solution find fun in that journey of whatever that is and the reason why is because we're bound to be back in situations like that again we so often think that current life yes. situations are like some type of a finale of an end. Like, oh, this is the final thing, right? Like, you know, and, and there's no finality to those things. Life is just going to be six months from now, six years, from, who knows when. There's going to be another situation that's going to come up where the exact same feelings and thoughts are going to exist. And can you give yourself the tools to live through those? I guess it's like zooming out. Don't be the main character. Mm. View, 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 view the situation from the outside. Put yourself in third person. Yeah, you know, and um, it, because if you can learn the tools of that, that's going to be way more powerful than whatever that maybe trivial issue that you're dealing with is. Right, that you're at work and you don't like your job, or that you're, you know, whatever that issue. And I don't mean trivial, like it's not a big deal. Because I know in perspective, it is the world's biggest yes. deal. Yes, and I'm not trying to belittle any type of issue like that. Right, because they're big. They're big. But go third person on it, and I tried, I tried to remind myself. What? If, okay, what if I start talking to myself, start referring to myself as Chris in my thinking? Like weird. Oh wow. One of the things yeah. I really admire about you is you keep life design at sort of the forefront of how you architect your life, uh-huh. and you're. Uh-huh. I could argue that you're sort of in the precipice of your growth journey uh-huh. and yet it doesn't ever look like it uh-huh. like another entrepreneur or even myself uh-huh. would be buried deep into the data into uh-huh. the business uh-huh. all the time focusing uh-huh. on all kinds of things uh-huh. and not not designing the yeah. life that I, you ultimately want to live so for yeah. you yeah. most people focus on life design perhaps after they've uh-huh. had their journey uh-huh. Uh-huh. or maybe closer to the end yeah. let's say yeah. You you've done a really remarkable job yeah. throughout your process, yeah. even yeah. during your failures yeah. or your struggles or your yeah. challenges, or your growth journeys, yeah. 
And now, yes, you're growing your business and you're having financial success, yeah. but you still maintain that yeah. rigor and that that yeah. design. Yeah. Tell me about what's important there. Yeah. Why are you able to do that? Tell you know, us a little bit about this because it's really quite remarkable. I, I appreciate that, and I'm uh, uh, flattered and taken back, uh, and I feel like a little privy on this. It's like I'm, I'm a work in progress, and I'm working on it. It's not always great, right? Um, the first one is Jade, my wife, Jade. Like, she's awesome with this. She's really good. She knows how to carpe diem and like have fun in the moment, and uh, she doesn't have to worry about like you know working long. You know, long. It's just not her makeup. It's an awesome, awesome characteristic. And early on in our relationship, she was always always been my son. Hey, uh, tomorrow I'm gonna maybe work till this time. Or, hey, am I working too much? Or, hey, I know it's a weekend. What are your thoughts? And she's always been my sounding board that I trusted. I just kind of said, look, I, without her, I, could, I would turn into a workaholic that would just grind, 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 grind. And so she's been a huge, huge piece. You know, the other thing, and so she's been a, a huge, to the point of I don't even really ask her anymore. We're just in a better rhythm. Yeah. You know, and I don't use it, but I used yeah. to have to ask her a ton. I don't know what's working too much. It's fun, you know? Yeah. Like, and, and I think, you know, if you, if you read about, I, I've read m multiple books about dying and death, and, and which I think is really, really, really fun and good. And like, there's, I think there's a key to happiness in the, in the understanding and the appreciation, the respect of, of dying. Of the terminalness yeah. of your and, life. Yeah. And like the number one regret, especially entrepreneurs and business people have, the number one is time, hmm. right? I just made that up. I don't know if it's the number one regret, but I in my perspective, it. in my perspective, it is, and that, that's what I'm so afraid of of uh, of doing. I'm so uh, I don't want to live a life where I look back and I say, "Oh shit, I spent too much time at work." Hmm. Like, it's very rare that people on their deathbed are like, "Man, I sh I'm sure there are some people." Man, I just should have worked those long hours on the weekend. <laughs> like that would have been my key to a fulfilling life, you know. Uh, business and and work is 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 tough because the numbers I uh, raising kids like you don't see results you don't see results quarterly at all you know yeah. <laughs> like and so it's so hard but then business we see results like you can see results quarterly hey wow look there's results there I mean our, our three year old like you know last quarter I was thinking we would have celebrated he doesn't he 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 goes to the bathroom in the toilet that would have been a big big result to like celebrate but now he's back to like you know shitting himself and like you know he's, you know come back you know so we got to reteach right there's no the results of your parenting are like when you're I don't know they're thirty it's years old too. yeah and they're very thankless and so it takes some discipline there mm. to really you know do it I I try and pick the kids up from school. A few times a week, I get out of school at two thirty. You know, I've I've asked Jade, is it okay? I, I'm not a part of the morning process. The the morning, I don't see them in the morning, Monday through Friday. I don't see them in the morning much at all. Is that okay? She said it was, so I said, all right, cool. <laughs> so I start work early. I start my work day early, and I work East Coast hours, and I get done. So that once three o'clock hits, you're free. Yeah, I don't. Nobody calls. No emails. I'm I'm really am done, done, done. You know, and that helps a lot yeah you know the other thing for growth and for like where the business is going to go it's all if i have the in, the energy to get there it'll go if i'm strapped up and i'm overworking and i'm stressed and i'm like you know working weekends and 80 hours a week and uh, there's no opportunity for growth there there's no way we're gonna open another office start another service no way Love it. so i think it's it's a key to it yeah as we wrap up here, uh -huh. I really appreciate this, dude. This is awesome. Thank you. There's a Thank lot you, of Ash. good I, wisdom in here. Yeah. I hope. I, I think people will get a lot of value from it. It's why I wanted to do this. And yeah. I feel like I need to listen to the episode again. There's a lot of good <laughs> stuff here. Thank you. Um, I appreciate For you, that. what does it mean to live a rich life? Um, to have, to live a day that you would mimic for eternity to live a life that you're living now that is replicable i mean i don't believe in the term retirement um why retire from something that you don't need that doesn't mean i want to work till i'm 95 years old right uh, i think if if you're living a rich life the life that you're living today right now is you would be okay replicating for the next rest of your life 
And that's what I strive to go and where I think that uh, when that, that's, that, that's the, the, the grade on rich, richness of a life. I love it. Dude, I honor you, man. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I know it took me some time to get you here, but I, I really I feel like we got some good stuff out of you today. Yeah, and I the reason I came because you and I had coffee together, and you just blew my mind with some <laughs> of the stuff you were telling me, and I was like, oh my god, and, and I and I and I was like, I felt indebted. I was like, you know, oh, I was like, good. man, uh, she's this guy's such a good guy, like. Uh, and then, like, <laughs> I was on a part, you know, hey, yeah, sure. I'll, you know, anyways, I'm really glad I did. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate you. the time that we've had together. Yes. Thank Love you. Love you, bro. Thanks, man. Yeah. Love you, too.